My Fukuoka trip was canceled due to Japan's first ever mega quake advisory. But what is this Nankai trough earthquake? And should you be concerned if you plan to visit soon? Let's talk about that. On August 8th, 2024, a 7.1 magnitude earthquake hit Miyazaki Prefecture on Kyushu's eastern coast at 4.42 p.m., leaving 16 people injured and dozens of homes damaged. This unassuming earthquake was what sent Japan into panic mode. Residents all over the country are emptying supermarkets, companies, and even bakeries. With an already ongoing rice shortage, tons of people are probably going to eat their curry without the rice, which is unfortunate to say the least. But despite all this, no lives were lost. The resulting tsunami was only knee-high and eating curry blocks raw isn't a crime. Why, then, were people so concerned about this earthquake? To understand this, we have to focus here on the Nankai Trough that stretches along Japan's southeast coast. It marks the boundary between two tectonic plates, the Eurasian Plate, which Japan sits on, and the Philippine Sea Plate. The latter is being forced under the former, creating what is known as a megathrust fault, hence the term Nankai Megathrust Earthquakes. This type of earthquake is the most powerful earthquake known to man. In fact, since 1900, all earthquakes of magnitude 9 or greater have been megathrust earthquakes. The Nankai earthquake had 13 recorded occurrences, and most of them were over magnitude 8. But ironically, it wasn't the total unpredictability of these events that instilled the most fear. It's that we know that they are coming, just not when. By analyzing past data, we know that Nankai earthquakes have a return period of 100 to 150 years. The last one happened in 1946, so we're now dangerously close to, if not already within, that window. In 2019, Japan's Central Disaster Prevention Council estimated that there's an 70 to 80 percent chance of another Nankai earthquake of magnitude 8 to 9 occurring within the next 30 years. To make matters worse, Nankai earthquakes often strike in pairs, where a rupture on one part of the fault is followed by another on the opposite side. So, at 7.15 p.m. on August 8th, about two and a half hours after the Miyazaki quake, the Japan Meteorological Agency, or JMA for short, issued a Nankai Trough Earthquake Extra Information Advisory. It warned that the chance of a larger earthquake happening soon had increased and urged people to follow the government's disaster prevention measures. Thus, the panic was unleashed. Fast forward to August 15th, a week after the earthquake. Thankfully, our worst fear didn't materialize, and a major earthquake never ensued. It was a rather peaceful week, apart from the typhoon Ampil wreaking havoc in the greater Tokyo area. At 5 p.m., the JMA lifted the special advisory, but still called for ongoing disaster preparedness, noting that the possibility of a major earthquake remains. Life is slowly returning to normal, and toilet rolls are back on the shelves. So the question becomes, what now? Should you cancel your trip to Japan? What if you still plan to go? Don't worry, I'll try to provide some answers. Let me tell you what in that. First, let's talk about travel plans. In my opinion, now that the alert has been lifted, there's no reason to cancel your trip. Are there possibilities for earthquakes? Yes, but it's as likely to happen this week as it was last week, next week, or any other week. It's like a virtual terms of services tick box you have to check no matter when you choose to go. But it doesn't mean there's nothing you can do to be more informed and better prepared for your trip. I'm not going to go into detail about what to do during an earthquake. There are plenty of good sources for that, like the Tokyo Disaster Preparedness Manual from the Tokyo Metropolitan Government. But a lot of the advice in those resources, such as stocking up on food and water, doesn't really apply to travelers like you and I. So here's a few things you can do even as a traveler. First is to install a disaster information app. These will provide real-time info on natural disasters and can have emergency alerts pushed to your phone when something happens nearby. The official app from the Japan National Tourism Organization is called Safety Tips, but other apps like Japan Travel also offer similar alerts through the Safety Tips API, so either one should work. That said, the Safety Tips app only has a 2.5 star rating on the Play Store, so it might not work well on all devices. And Japan Travel is constantly trying to make me pay for their premium services, which I really don't like. 
A great alternative regularly recommended by travelers and residents alike is nerve disaster prevention. Despite the obvious anime reference, the app is surprisingly very professional and easy to use. Apart from the push alerts, you can set multiple locations on a watch list and get real-time updates on earthquakes, typhoons, thunderstorms, and more in a timeline format. It's a pretty awesome app, but don't take my word for it. The 4.5 rating and download numbers should speak for themselves. I've also heard that even without a dedicated app, you'll still receive critical alerts just by connecting to the local cellular network. I can't verify this myself, so take it with a grain of salt. The second thing to do is to buy insurance, more specifically, insurance with natural disaster coverage. Now there's usually not an item that's specifically called natural disaster coverage. Instead, you should look for emergency medical expenses, trip cancellation compensations, emergency evacuation expenses, travel delay expenses, etc., and make sure that there are no exclusions clauses for natural disasters. This way, even if your trip is affected by natural disasters, you'll be covered, minimizing the impact. The third thing you can do is to register with your embassy before you go. Different countries have different ways of doing this, but a quick Google search should point you in the right direction. For example, there's the Smart Traveler Enrollment Program for U.S. citizens and the Registration of Canadians Abroad page for I'm not your buddy, friend. He's not your friend, guy. I'm not your guy, buddy. The purpose is threefold. First, to receive important safety info about your destination. Second, to help the embassy contact you in case of an emergency. And third, to help your family and friends reach you if you lose contact. It's usually free, so there's really no reason not to do this before your trip. If you're still really worried about the earthquake risk but don't want to cancel your trip, there's a fourth thing you can do that is to simply avoid visiting areas that are more prone to earthquakes. There is a JSHIZ map developed by NIED based on research from HERP that combines both the PSHM and the SESM you can refer to. Basically, the map colors areas based on the probability of an earthquake over a certain magnitude happening within 30 or 50 years. Dark red means 100%, while light yellow means zero. And you can tweak the magnitude threshold as you see fit. I personally would never go this far. If you've decided to follow this map, you will have to dismiss Tokyo, Osaka, and Kyoto all from your list. But if this is what gives you the peace of mind, do what you must, King. And that's pretty much it. I hope you found these suggestions helpful and learned something new about the earthquake situation in Japan. I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay safe everyone. Peace.